Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs today with a mystery that I came into with my analog radio frequency signal generator. Um, now this dates back from the 1980s. It was uh, published by Elector magazine in their famous summer issue where they had more than 100 circuits in one issue. And uh, I will show you uh, the circuit in the background. Um, it seems to be even a copy from the US ham radio journal from 1978. Anyway, it's a totally analog radio frequency function generator which works from 50 kilohertz up to 35 megahertz. It can be AM modulated internally, externally or without any AM modulation. It has an extra output uh, for a counter, as you can see here. The two uh, top devices, they are additions from a later period uh, from me. And uh, I, they even published um, a PCB, uh, which I uh, home etched at that time, where you couldn't afford any industry-made uh, PCBs. So a nice uh, little generator for that time because getting this as a professional instrument was out of the reach for uh, hobbyists. So here are only standard parts. I think this cost me all in all, I don't know, around 50 Deutschmarks or something like that in that time. And even today I'm uh, quite happy uh, with it. Um, that's why I later added this uh, frequency counter. Uh, as you can see, I've now turned it to nearly exactly 10 megahertz, but we will uh, take this one away so that it doesn't distract, distract us from the pro problem. And here I have um, a little nice addition uh, for measuring uh, the amplitude. All right, that way you probably can see it a little bit better. Inside this uh, aluminum uh, box is one of the famous logarithmic rectifiers from analog devices, which you can configure from the audio frequency range up to the gigahertz uh, frequency range. And it measures uh, from 32 dB microvolts up to 170 dB microvolts and gives a linear, a dB linear output voltage. And I've adjusted this to 1 dB equals 10 millivolt and it works with an accuracy of better than half a dB from 100 kilohertz up to 200 megahertz, at least this version here. And this is a little home-built um, microcontroller control display that uh, simply calculates from the output voltage from this log converter, um, the dB microvolt value or the millivolts uh, value and you can do any kind of measurements like that. You can make relative measurements like this one. You can switch from microvolts to dB milliwatts. You can switch from 50 to uh, 75 ohm load, etc., etc. Or instead measuring the RMS value, you can also measure or display peak peak. I made this thing uh, simply because when you're dealing with radio frequency levels, you have all the different definitions. Uh, sometimes you need dB microvolts, sometimes you need dB milliwatts, etc. Um, so anyway, this will serve us um, to demonstrate the problem that I discovered. And the problem I only discovered after I got this thing here um, built up. Um, so let's first of all null out the, we have now the maximum level here uh, that the generator can deliver, which is 120 millivolts RMS or 101.5 dB microvolts. And we'll set this to zero. And now we take a look at the stepped attenuator uh, with which you can, because uh, all the switches are daisy chained, uh, you can with 1 dB resolution have the output signal attenuated up to, let me think, 60, 70, up to minus 80 dB from its maximum value. So let's try out each single 
attenuator step. By the way, these, these are classical attenuators in T shape with 50 ohms input and 50 ohms output impedance. And the minus 1 dB step gives minus 1.1. 1 .1. So the accuracy here is around 0.1, depending on the level, 0.1 dB. So this is okay. The minus 2 dB gives minus 2.1 dB within spec. Minus 3 dB gives exactly minus 3. Minus 4 dB gives minus 4.2. That's okay. If we're within half a dB, then we're within the accuracy here of the log converter. Minus 10 dB gives minus 10.1. So, and finally, we have three identical minus 20 dB attenuators. Let's take a look. Minus 19.5. Um, by the way, it doesn't make sense uh, to go with a single switch. Th these are simple double pole, double throw switches, not designed for radio frequency applications, but they work up to a, an attenuation of minus 20 dB. So you can't go any, or it shouldn't go any higher in attenuation above minus 20 dB with these uh, switches. That's why they simply stopped at minus 20 dB and just took three separate switches to reach all in all minus 60 or together with the other switches minus 80 dB. And um, this also has the greatest d deviation from the theoretical to the practical value. So you want to have minus 20 dB and with the chosen resistors, which are from the E12 series, uh, the best they got was calculated minus 19.6. Now we have displayed minus 19.5. So this is all within spec. Now the other one again, minus 19.5. And the third one also minus 19.5. So everything is okay with each single one of the switches. And now we'll just uh, put them on in a row because these uh, 50 ohm T style attenuators, they have 50 ohm input impedance, 50 ohm output impedance. And uh, that's what makes them special because uh, you can simply uh, put them in a row and uh, get a stepped attenuator. So the first one, minus one plus the next one, minus two should give minus three. Yeah, we're exactly there. Plus the next one, minus three should give all in all minus six. Perfect. Next one, minus 40 B plus the minus six should give minus 10. Yeah, we're exactly there. The next one is minus 10 should give all in all minus 20 exactly plus minus 0.1 dB. Then come the three minus 20 dB attenuators. The first one, minus 20 dB added should give minus 40, a little bit less because we know they are not exactly minus 20 dB. So, okay, it's a little bit more even now, but that's also due to the logarithmic rectifier, which has half a dB uh, tolerance. So minus 40, 0.6 dB is within specs. The next one should give all in all minus 60 point something. So we're a little bit off, but this might also be due to tolerances, added tolerances of the switch, the log converter, etc. So I'm still happy with that. And now the last switch, oops, what's that? We should get to minus 80 dBs and we don't get a lower value, but we get a higher level, My, only minus 47 dB. So how can that be? So it looks like there's something wrong with the last switch. Although when we tested it, it as a single attenuated, all was okay. So let's, uh, let's try, let's take out the middle one. Aha, uh -huh, we're back at minus 62. So now it looks like the middle attenuator of the three identical ones there's something wrong with. And when we take out the first one, it looks like the first one is broken. And even then we could take out the first minus 20 dBs. The first five attenuators added up are minus 20 dB. And when we take them out, everything is all right. 
minus 20, minus 40, minus 60. And when we now add any of the remaining attenuators, let's take this minus 3 dB, we should get to minus 64 all in all. No, <laughs> it remains at minus 61. Or the minus 4 dB one. We're getting again a slightly higher value. So it's an absolutely mysterious behavior. Every sw single switch of its own is working perfectly. But at the moment when we reach a total attenuation of minus 60 dB, no matter by what combination of switches, then something happens. Now we have minus 40, minus 62, which is also a little bit strange. It should be minus 60, but okay. And then we add in any other switch and we get minus 57 instead of minus 80. So I discovered this only when I had these two little things uh, built and added because look we're at levels here below one millivolts and I couldn't see this beforehand on my oscilloscope. You only get this effect at the lowest uh, levels um, when we're at, at in the millivolts region at minus 30 dB microvolts. There's no problem at all. This, this only becomes apparent at the very lowest levels and this puzzled me for sometime and it really drove me crazy because first of all I thought there must be something wrong here with with this uh, configuration but I can assure you every single part that you see is working correctly. The frequency generator is working correctly. We have seen every single one of the stepped switches is working okay. I can assure you the logarithmic rectifier is working correctly and the little uh, microcontroller which makes the conversion um, and all the math behind that is working 100% correct. There's nothing wrong with any single element here. So it's your guess what is the reason for this strange behavior? How can this be possible? And I will uh, publish the solution of this mystery enigma riddle, however you want to call it, at the weekend. But it w I would be happy if you just make your guesses what you think is behind this strange behavior. So I first wanted to publish uh, this on April 1st as a kind of uh, April Fool's video, although it is... Had, is it, it, there's no cheating here inside and no trick. It's real physics that happens uh, here. Um, so that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until the weekend, if you're interested. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.